From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. My, oh my, my heart is so filled with what we're going to be doing today because we're going to carry on where we left off last week. You remember, uh, Jack pointed out that there were four major signs that are uh, being fulfilled right now, pointing to the return of the Lord. And he said last week that we could actually be the generation alive when Jesus comes again, because he's four major, major signs. Oh, there are many, many hundreds of signs in the Bible, but four major signs that would be fulfilled or ready to be fulfilled just prior to his return. Jack, would you do me a favor? Just name those four once again. We're going to carry on where we left off last week. Oh, let me give you the background of this. This Bible was written 4,000 years ago. It says, holy men of God spake, they were moved by the Holy Spirit. And guess what? You don't have a Catholic version or King James version. This is the version of the Jews. What? Those holy men were all Jews. And then the New Testament were 11 of the 12 apostles who were Jews and continued preaching the gospel of salvation in the kingdom. There are 66 books here. 64 were written by Jews. As some of you Christians say, I want nothing with a Jew with the Jews. Throw your Bible away. I believe this book. And just like these holy men of God were moved, it was August 13th when the Holy Spirit visited my home, the third member of the Holy Trinity. And he said, you have been appointed by God the Father and anointed by the Holy Spirit to tell the world that Jesus is about to come to set up the kingdom. Mm, amen. Well, the Bible says no one knows the day and the hour. But he said, you will know, will know when it's near, even at the door. The Holy Spirit has been coming to me now for 13 months. And he said, you are the generation. Tell the world. There are four things proving it. And you're going to hear those four things today. The one is all the wickedness of sin in the world. Yeah. Number two is Israel becoming a nation in 1948. Number three is World War III. I'm going to do something that's going to shock you today. And you'll know I'm the prophet. The Holy Spirit talked on. And number four is the kingdom of God set up on earth. And you know how far away heaven is that's going to be moved? 187 trillion billions of miles. And we go up at the rapture in the twinkle of an eye, 11 100 of a second. Wow, what a day to be alive. <laughs> and you are that generation. I'm going to prove it. So you know what you need to be doing as a Christian? Believing this and obeying it. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Do I, looking for it. It says, yeah, it never happened in my lifetime. You backslider, get right with God. Oh, Jack, if we're looking for the coming of the Lord, we're going to be living for the coming of the Lord because when we see the Lord, we want to hear from him. Well done, good and faithful servant. We want to be serving him. Well, he named those four, and the first one was iniquity shall abound. We dwelt on that last week. But, uh, Jack, would you elaborate just a little bit more about that? I'm going to reemphasize it. There are four major signs proving, proving, we are the generation. Jesus said, no man will know the day and the hour of my return, except my father. But he said, you will know when it's near, 
even at the door. You ready? This is what I said last week with different verses. But just put 19 of the sins together, all the bedlam, all the fuss, all the fighting that's going on in the world right now. And that is 2 Timothy 3, verses 1 to 5. This know also in the last day, perilous time shall come. Men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but they deny the power of from such turn away. You little guys with your little tea parties, and we all get together, the join together. No, you don't. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Would you say, God, none? You don't run around with the devil's crowd. Be not unlikely together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion hath light with darkness? What concord hath Christ with Belial, the devil? What agreement hath the temple of God, your body, with the temple of idols, their bodies? Wherefore, come out from among them. Don't have your little tea pie to get together. If they say that Jesus is not God and they blaspheme this holy book, Leave them alone. God says, if you do, I'll be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord God Almighty. But that's number one. A world filled with iniquity. It's here, ladies and gentlemen. I can give you hundreds more texts. Mm. They're all here. Let's move on on the second point. Oh, yes, yes, for that second point. We dwelt a little bit on that last week also, and that had to do with the development of the nation of Israel, 1948. Well, you know, it's so wonderful. I love Israel. We've been there 10 times, and I wrote an article about it. I'm just going to quickly read it to you. I, I shall never forget the first time I saw Israel. There I was newly married and already traveling to the land I had learned to love as a little girl in Sunday school. I remember thinking that the land looked just as it must have in ancient times. Yet it seemed to me to be almost a bridge between the past and the future. I'll never forget that first time that I saw Israel. In fact, I had the blessed joy about the fifth time that we went back of interviewing some of the the Knesset members, the ambassador to the United Nations, Abba Eben, and some of the others. I love Israel. Somebody came to me the other day. I said, I love Israel. And he said, why? A lot of people hate Israel. Why do they hate Israel? I said, because God loves Israel. Satan hates what God loves. Is that true, Jack? Oh, yeah. Satan hates what God loves. God said, I have not chosen you, Israel, because you are more in number than any other people. You were the fewest, but because I loved you. But First Chronicles says Satan stood against the Jew. Oh, how Satan hates the Jew. And by the way, you now are going to hear point two, three, and four of so I, we are the generation, and it all has to do with the Jew, and you better love the Jew because God loves the Jew. He said, I've chosen you. You're the apple of mine eye. You are my betrothed, my fiance. You're my wife, and I give unto you Israel an everlasting name, and it's Satan that wants to destroy you. All the wars, all the slaughter, all the concentration camps, the millions of Jews that Adolf Hitler killed, demonic beings doing it. And if you hate a Jew, I'm telling you Palestinians and I'll call yourselves Christian. You better turn around. God loves the Jew. Right. Right. He says, you have not chosen me, Israel. I have chosen you because I loved you and I'm going to bring you into the world. And you're going to have salvation and I'm going to put you into the womb, not sex, into a Jewish woman's body, the Virgin Mary. Mm. Oh, what a guy. Let's go on. You know what, Jack? 
uh, this, of course, I'm going from iniquity and from the Jew. I'm going on to something. You might be thinking right now, how is this all relevant to my life? I don't live over there. How is this relevant to my life? Because of this next point, the development of something that's going to happen worldwide. World War Three. You know, the first message I ever heard Jack speak was on World War III. I can't believe it. In fact, it was called The Coming War with Russia. The Coming War with Russia. Now, you know, Russia uh, was not uh, just so preeminent in years ago, but it certainly is now. Oh, my, oh, my. And I'll never forget, uh, I heard him speak on this, and I thought, whoa, you're some speaker. This is really interesting. The Coming War with Russia. Well, you know, Jack, I think that I'd like to just read how Russia is developing right now. I'm going to go on. There you see it. That's the, that's the uh, record that he made. 60 years ago. Woo, 60 years ago. When? The, where, when, why? You answered those, those questions. Well, you know what? I'm going to go on and show how the development of Russia is happening right now, and it's worldwide. She's going to head up, want to be the, one of the major factors in World War III. Are you surprised? But take a look at this next one, this next headline, Russia to launch biggest war games in its history. Whoa, the biggest war games? Wow, she's thinking about war. Russia will build missiles if U.S. leaves treaty Putin warns a Cold War agreement that we have with her, and we're kind of threatened. If you leave it, huh, you're in trouble. Now, friends, this one really surprised me. U.S. concerned with abnormal Russian satellite. Why are we concerned? Because there's abnormal behavior with the satellite. And they say this could be a weapon. Woo! I never heard of such a thing. And then the Kremlin will respond in kind if U.S. develops intermediate missiles. And then once again, you know I've said this for a long time, the Chinese and the Russian governments are buddies. Well, the Chinese bombers likely training for U.S. strikes. Whoa! In other words, they're going to join with Russia even closer. China, Russia warn U.S. of consequences over sanctions. Can you believe it? There they are. Well, who's going to oppose them? France calls for the European Union Army to contain Russia. They see what's happening. The European Army, we've got to stand up and be aware of what's going on. Well, someone that's aware that Europe is waking up is Iran. Iran tests ballistic missiles capable of carrying nuclear warhead to where? Europe. Well, Iran's going to join with Russia and China also. And then Britain's RAF, of course, that's the British Royal Air Force, intercepts six Russian bombers over the Black Sea. Britain goes along with America. Okay, and here we are. Iran, Russia, Turkey, summit meeting to be held in Iran in September. Well, this happened. They got together. Once again, Russia to deliver S-400 system to Turkey in 2019. And Turkey is well, the yes, of the Bible. Of course, that's just uh, next year. U.S. pledges strong backing missile defense for Israel against Hezbollah. Well, you know what? You said it, Jack. The United States is going to be on the side of Israel, and so is the European Union. We're joining together. We say, we can't let them take over us either. Well, you know, Israel's not asleep. They know what's going on, and Netanyahu, their prime minister in Gaza region. Israel will act with great force, no doubt about it. And again, Netanyahu, anyone who tries to harm Israel will pay a heavy price. And then the prime minister, Israel, will use all its might if war is forced upon us. Well, you know, that's what they're doing. They're forcing Israel to come out and fight. And then, of course, Bennett says Israel will destroy Lebanon if war breaks out. Oh, my, I have so many things here, but I'm going to wind it up. Peace, not possible in foreseeable future over there. Well, we know that. We know that a war is being planned. There will be a war, and that's one of the things that Jack's going to talk about in just a moment. The Israeli Defense Force, Hamas to feel our 
full intensity. Those are all Muslim and, nations. And that's that right. Israel's going to fight against. Well, honey, the United States will be defeated. Are oh, you kidding? Oh, that's wrong. Absolutely, Jack. We are not going to be defeated because we're on the side that God wants us to be on, and that's the side of Israel. Now, I've really been reading a lot of headlines to you, friends, but you can see how it's all developing into a horrible war that's coming. And I'm going to go to Jack right now and ask him, is it really in the Bible with names? Russia's in the Bible? How about Ezekiel 38 there, Jack? I've heard you speak about Russia in the Bible. Ladies and gentlemen, I, for the first 15 years, 20 years of my life, went to 800 churches all through the United States of America and Canada preaching a message called The Coming War with Russia According to the Bible. It was a bestseller. Everybody wanted to know what it was about. I went to Europe. I went to 50 nations of the world. They wanted to hear it. I have preached more on this subject than any man alive, and it's Ezekiel 38 and 39. What does the Bible say? And I'm putting the words on the screen from Ezekiel 38. The word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, set your face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against them. Gog is the end time ruler of Russia. Could be Putin. God will use the birds as a symbol of what's coming to destroy the country. Why? From the air. And this has to do with jets, has to do with all these things, missiles and all the rest. And that's what's coming. Listen to me. Atomic war, the greatest atomic war in history. Psalm 97, 3, a fire goes before him. Isaiah 6, 6, 15, the Lord will come with fire. Ezekiel 20, 47, the flaming flame shall not be quenched. Joel 2, verse 3, a fiery vows before them. And then when we get to Zephaniah 1, 18, a fire devours all of them. There's no end to it. Atomic war, the greatest atomic war in history. And it's the end of all these nations that try to destroy the Jew. Why? God loves the Jew. The Bible says God stands with him. And the word of God also adds Satan stood against the Jew. Every anti-Semite, every Jew hater, you're going to answer to God one day. Because when judgment comes, it says the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the whoremongers, the murderers, idolaters, and all liars are going to pay the price. What's that? The last five commandments, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, wife, or children. And you've done it. And further, all hell is going to be let loose. It is the end of the world. No, the world's never going to end. It's the end of one part of the world. And there's 1,800 cults and 2,500 religions. They're all against the word of God. They're all apostates. And be put in Gehenna, the eternal penitentiary for lost souls. Now, you know, a lot of people think that's God putting people in hell. No, sir. Every man makes his own choice. Are you listening? God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth him should not perish. Gehenna, the fires of hell. But he has eternal life. Now, that's verse 16. Every man chooses, verse 18. He that believeth in Christ is not condemned. Hallelujah. He that believeth not is already condemned as he waits for Gehenna, the final penitentiary. Verse 36. He that believeth on the Son, Jesus, has everlasting life. He that believeth not shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him forever and forever forever. But those who are in the kingdom are going to be in the most glorious place forever, and you're going to hear about that next week. You know, friends, all that we have been talking about today, about the terrible war, it is going to be a World War III. But just prior to that, the Lord is coming for His own in the rapture. How good it is to be ready for that. 
because we're going to escape something that's going to be horrible on earth. But when the Lord comes back and we're coming back with him to set up the kingdom, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. That's what we're going to talk about next week, about the Judeo-Christian New World Order. Right, Jack? Oh, I'm telling you, it's going to be so wonderful. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that we are the generation you see, we've been waiting now for over 4,000 years. First of all, Christ was born. He came to earth at the 2,000 year mark. He died on a cross. You know why he died on a cross? Because the Jewish people had made blood sacrifices through animals. And he came to the conclusion when they realized that without shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin, but it couldn't be animal blood. It had to be human sacrifice. And every man on earth had sinned. There was not one just man upon earth that did good and didn't sin. So God said, well, who are we going to choose? And Christ said, three of us are spirits, all called gods. I will go. I will become the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. That just covers all the Jews were in Sheol, Hades, waiting at a comfort side, but they couldn't go to the other side because their sins were not removed, only covered. Christ died on that cross, and uh, he cried out at the end as his blood was flowing, let's die, finished. You can now get to heaven. And he went and got the people out of Sheol and took them to the third heaven, a form of rapture ahead of time. Oh, but wait till you hear what's going to happen to all the rest of us. You know, we escape world war, all of us, when it comes. And when he returns, we don't have to worry about it because we stop it. Armageddon, stop. And then peace forever. Get ready for the real thing. Just Trust Jesus. It's that simple. God sent his son to be the savior of the world. And he will do it. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's son, cleanses from all sin. Every sin. Nothing you've done is so bad you cannot be forgiven if you'll confess it. And say, I'm sorry, God. Pray that right now, Lord, I've sinned. In the quietness of the moment after we quit praying, name your sins. Get rid of them. Let the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse you. Get ready for heaven. Get ready for the great kingdom we're going to preach about next week. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be so glorious. Lord Jesus, may there be multitudes right now who pray that wonderful prayer. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. You died for me to take away my sins. And I'm asking you to do it now in your holy name. Amen. Oh, my. Did you pray that prayer? Then you just became a child of God. How good to know that there's nothing that you have ever done that cannot be forgiven because of the blood of Christ. Well, you know, we're going to be elaborating a lot more next week about what's happening in this world. But this will help you as you walk with the Lord. Write to me let me know you prayed that prayer. First steps in a new direction. Don't be afraid. I know I'm going to get a letter or two this week. Oh, am I afraid of that war? You don't need to be afraid of that war because the Lord is coming. How wonderful it is to know the Lord and be ready for His coming. So write to me, First Steps in a New Direction. I'll send it in the mail as soon as I hear from you. For our wonderful offer of the week, I love Dr. Dave's book, Hope in the Last Days. This is an excellent book. You must have it. It's so prophetic. It's wonderful. My husband even gave the forward on this book because he thought it was so great. And I'm also going to be... Uh, giving to you, celebrating the birth of the eternal God. Now, here's our announcer. He's going to tell you how you can receive this wonderful offer. Bob? To order your copy of Hope in the Last Days with a bonus celebrating the birth of the eternal God, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 
1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impe Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impe Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N9A6Y1. Thank you, Bob, and I want to say order right away. We'll get it in the mail as soon as we hear from you. You know, I want to leave you with a very, very important thought, and it's a great one to close this program with because, you know, the Lord could come at any moment in the rapture to take Christians home. Live today as if you will stand before God tomorrow. Oh, my, if the Lord came now, I trust that you prayed that prayer or you really are ready. But we need to be living for the Lord every single day, don't we? Some of us have loved ones we want to draw to the Lord. And we trust that God will help you as you live for Him today. We're going to look forward to uh, being in your home again next week. And you know, until then, always remember that God cares for you. Oh yes, so very much. And so do we. We look forward to being with you. And uh, always tune in to Jack Benibby Presents. He's going to have the news and how to live for the Lord in the day in which we're living. Praise the Lord. We love you. God bless you as you walk with him. Bye-bye.